God in heaven, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we come. God, we honor you, we praise you, we lift you, we magnify you, Lord. For you are holy. God, you are worthy. And we praise you even on tonight, Lord. God, we thank you for another privilege, another chance, another opportunity. God, we honor you tonight, Father God, for you are God and you are God alone. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins, bless our lives, bless us to walk with you, and bless us to hear from you. Lord, we thank you, Father God, again for another chance to study and read your word. We ask you, Father God, to bless your word. Bless your word, Father God, to speak to us, that we will believe your word, that we will trust your word, that your word, Father God, will lead us, guide us, and direct us. God, we ask you, Father God, to continue to walk with us and bless us from today, that when we leave this place, Father God, we will be safe, that when we leave this place, Father God, that we will know you as God, even the better, that we will be able to tell men, women, boys, and girls about your goodness. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. Yes, Lord. You are holy. You are so holy. We serve the holy God. Amen. And bless the name of Jesus the Christ. Our God is the holy God. Amen. We're looking again into the numbers of Psalms. We're in Psalm number, Psalm number 103, 103 again, Psalm number 103, Psalm number 103. Last time we got together, we, we, we ended up with Psalm 103 and verse number five. So tonight we will begin at verse number six. And as we begin at verse number six, we will stop somewhere around verse number 12. Amen. Verse number 12. Amen. Verse number 12. Verse number 12. So we'll look at verse, verses 6 through 12 on tonight. We've discovered that the psalmist is talking to himself. He says, oh, my soul. He's, his soul means his very own self, his innermost being. He's talking to himself. Yes. So as he begins to talk to himself, he starts off encouraging himself to bless the Lord. He tells himself, come on self, bless the Lord. All that is within me, bless his holy name. God has a name that's above every name. He has, he has given Jesus a name above every name. He tells us to bless the Lord, amen. So as he tells us to bless the Lord, he comes in verse number two, as if he didn't hear himself in verse number one. And he says again, bless the Lord, O my soul. And then he says, don't forget his benefits. Uh, the psalmist know that even in the 21st century, we got a bad habit of forgetting who God is and what God has already done. When it doesn't go our way, we can forget about what God has done. When it doesn't uh, go our way, we, we are easily forgetting what God has already done. So the psalmist says, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, forget not his many benefits. God has given the believer some benefits that everybody else don't, doesn't have. There are some benefits that we have that other people don't have. God has chosen us, he has blessed us, he has made us different in the fact that we received Jesus Christ as our personal savior, and now we have some benefits. When you look at the text, the text is talking to the children of Israel. 
they have benefits that no other a group of people had. Those who walk with God has always and will always have benefits that those who don't walk with him have. It's kind of like the statement that is be willing to do today what others won't do in order to have tomorrow what others won't have. So you must be willing to accept a God way and God's being today in order to have what others won't have because that's the only way we can have what God has and what God has in store for us. So he talks about his benefits. He said, forget not his benefits. One of the benefits he lists, the first benefit is he forgive us of all our iniquities. He forgive us. He forgives us of our iniquities. The psalmist says he forgives all your iniquities. Iniquities are just not sin. Iniquities is sin out of control. Iniquities are sins on steroids. It's a lifestyle of sin. It's the living with sin. It's the living in sin. It is your iniquities. It's just not any old sin. And then he says, God forgives us for even the lifestyle of sin. And the lifestyle is not just any one sin that we talk about lifestyle. Anything that's out of control in your life, God forgives you for it. This lifestyle of sin, this iniquity of sin, God has a way of forgiving us for it, even though we have continued in it. So when we decide that we want to quit it or get out of it, then God forgives us for it. Question. Does God forgive us for sin that we still entangled in? Does God forgive us for sin that we still entangled in? Some people nod their head, maybe. Some people nod their head, yes. Explain to me. Does God forgive us for sin that we still entangled in? Who wants to talk? I would say yes. Yeah myself because I think I know God has forgiven me for sins that I committed by omission or commission and I'm uh if they would get up we're in sin we have to be grateful that he woke us up this morning okay and ask for forgiveness for those things that might not I do might not have been pleasing in his sight but I'm so grateful that I'm glad you brought up this thing called sin of omission and this thing called sin of commission. What's the difference between sin of omission and sin of commission? Because that's what iniquity is, one of them. What is sin of commission and sin of omission? What's the definition here? Don't give me the one great grandmama gave you. You knew you were done, you did it anyway. What is that? Know that you've done it and you did it anyway. What is that? Commission. Commission. So is the word really committing sin? Is that what it is? Sin of commission is really committing sin? Knowingly, willingly, recklessly committing sin, yes? Okay, what is sin of omission? You didn't know any better? The failure to do what's right. Right, the key word is omission. I omitted to do it. I did know it was wrong. It's like when someone is is going to court and you you are a star witness and you choose not to testify. I omit myself from it. It's just as much sin as it is if you commit it, omit it, commit it. When you look in the book of, of Acts, you see Saul. The Bible says that Saul was holding the man's coat, the men's coats, right? If he was holding the murderer's coats, then he is committing a sin of omission. He didn't, he didn't participate in it, but he didn't get anybody out of it either. He didn't try to rescue uh, Stephen. He didn't try to stop them. When you look at the Minneapolis police officers that killed George Floyd, when its police chief shows up on the scene, he gathers information. Once he gathers information, he fires them on the spot. And what did he say? Failure to intervene is complicit. His words, right? So failure to intervene is complicit. So you omitted 
to do what is right when you knew what was right. So both of them are sins that we do that we know what we're doing. Are sins we lack doing and we know we should do it. Yes? So let's make sure we understand that sins of commission or committing of sin or doing sin, that sin is sin that we do willingly, recklessly, knowingly. Sin of omission are sins that we do willingly, recklessly, or knowingly. Right? So there are sins that we participate in that we don't know what's right or wrong, right? But both of these sins of omission and sins of commission, we know it. It's kind of like turning your head. That's why the police officer says every day, anybody who knows anything come forward. The person who never comes forward that was an eyewitness, they also have committed sin. Yes? So when we look at iniquity, iniquity is sin out of control. Iniquity is sin on steroids. Iniquity is sin that you got into it and you start balancing monkeys and you say, hey, I got this. And all of a sudden it turns to a baboon or it turns into trying to handle King Kong. Are you with me? So iniquities are those sins that's just out of control. It's, it's that you just can't stop doing it. I tried it, but I can't stop it. Late Pastor E.B. Hill said the only way to get out of sin is to stop it, quit it. Don't negotiate it. Don't go and tell your sinning friends, hey man, I'm gonna have to stop now. Because every time you go tell your sinning friends that you gotta stop, what do they do? Convince you to keep going. You just have to walk away. Throw your hands up and just quit it. Your thoughts, your heart must be clean and pure. So God forgives us for these sins of iniquity, sin out of control, who heals our diseases. He healed all our diseases. If we're going to be healed, it's going to take Jesus to do it. It takes God to do it. We're talking about this God. Remember now, this God that we serve, the Lord himself, is a self-existing God. He's the eternal God. He's the God who will be there when no one else is there. He's the God who has been there and no one else was there. Amen, amen. He's the God that when there was nothing, there was not anything, God is there. God was there. God will be there. So God heals us of all our diseases. He's better than the doctors. Matter of fact, he sent Jesus to be the great physician to prove that God is greater than the doctor. He heals us. He redeems our lives from destruction. We're on our way to destruction. Let me tell you, we don't even have sense enough to take care of ourselves. In our very smartest moment, we are committing suicide. In our best, we can't even handle it. At our best, we are nothing but filter rags in the eyesight of God. At our very best. When we're doing our best. So God redeems us. What does the word redeem mean? He bought us back, right? He bought. He spent something to get us. God redeems us. He buys us back. Who redeems us? God redeems us. Why did he have to buy us back? Because Satan owned us. If we were without Jesus, if we were without God, Satan owns us. But God came along and bought us back. And I like to say, not only did he buy us back, he brought us back. Not only did he, did he bought us, he also brought us. He bought us and he brought us back. He brought us back. He redeemed us. He set us aside. He, he redeemed us in our entire life from destruction. Our smart selves are destroying our smart selves. When you look at the Senate, when you look at the House of Representatives, 
These guys and these women are the smartest people on the planet. They got law degrees. They are self-acclaimed smartest people on the planet. And they can't even choose a leader. They can't even, it doesn't even make sense for them to be fair to other people. Every day, every time they vote on something, they vote in something to benefit them and to destroy those who put them in office. I've always said, any policy they vote on, they ought to be able to live by. We ought not be fighting over insurance because whatever they vote in, they ought to be the one who carry the same insurance. These are smart people and they are smart criminals. But God redeems us. He, he buys us. He buys us back. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. He, he crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. God is so loving toward us. He's so kind to us. He gives us tender mercies. God deals with us in a tender way, even though we deserve to be harshly dealt with. When our lives have dictated that God just ought to just slap us around, God just keep on, keep on over and over, giving us second chances, third chances, 18 chances, how many of y'all had 200 chances already? Anybody? Well, let me just serve notice in case you didn't know. If you're over the age of zero, you've had more than 200 chances. The Bible said we were born in sin. We were shaped in iniquity. We have the attitude of being people who love to sin. Sin is a part of our lifestyles. Sin is who we are. We just like sin over and over again, over and over again. We just like to sin. Our sin nature dictates us to sin. And it feels good to our sin nature. I mean, it feels good. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Some people have come to the conclusion that I'm too old to be looking at stuff like this. You sure are. You were too old when you were born, but you still looked at it. There are people who are so proud of themselves and what they accomplish. They are proud of themselves and what they have accomplished. They're just proud of it. It's all right to have pride, but don't be proudful. The pride of life. I just, I just got to have, and I got everybody, I got to let everybody know I got everything. I got it going on. So, so he's so kind to us, he's so tender, he has mercy, and his mercy just keeps on blessing us, regardless of who we are. God's mercy just keep running us down. Verse number five says, he satisfies our mouths with good things. He satisfies our mouths. This is talking about food. He satisfies, I said on last week that we do not have a problem with with food, 98.99% .99 of us don't have a problem with food. We don't wonder if we're going to eat, we wonder what we're going to eat. We got choices. We got choices of food. Just mute everything but pass the extra mic. We have choices of food, right? And so God satisfies us with good things, with good food so that our youth is renewed like the eagle's youth. Isaiah says that we, we will run and not be weary. We said the young folk will run and pass out and faint. But those are those of us, regardless of our age, those on the Lord's side, those on the Lord's side, we renew our strength. We mount up with wings like eagles. We run and not get weary. We walk and not pass out. 
And as we running and we walking, all the young folk just strolled on out. When we love the Lord, when we're in touch with him, when we walk with him, God renew, renews our strength so that the youth is renewed like the eagles. So the, the race is not given to the swift. The race is not given to the strong. The race is given to those who hang in there with the Lord so that our youth is renewed. Verse number six is where we are tonight. Psalm 103. Verse number six, the Lord executes righteousness and, judge, and justice for all who are oppressed. What's the word oppress? All who have been taken advantage of, all of those who are being held down. You know anybody that's being held down? Anybody that's going through something because of somebody else? I mean, there's a system. There's a system that's set up to, to hold some people down. There's a system. There's a system that's set up to hold people back. There's a system. There's a whole system that's set up to make sure that you don't make it. To make sure your life is miserable. It's not a system set up to make sure that we don't win. It's a system set up to make sure that we don't even get in. And let me tell you a secret. If you're not on the table, at the table, you're on the menu. Al Green, Congressman Al Green says it over and over again. If you're not sitting at the table, you're on the menu. In other words, you're being discussed in a negative way and they're planning while you are asleep. While girls are twerking, they making plans. While we are gang banging, while, while we are doing drugs, they making plans. And the fact of the matter is, while you are making plans and your plans are not working, there's a reason why your plans are not working. It was not produced to work. And then if it was going to work, they're trying to make sure it didn't work. There's a whole system set up to make sure people don't make it. That's why we have to inform our young people, get your education because it can't be taken away from you. We have to inform our young people, have a good attitude because your attitude will open doors for you. Attitude equals to altitude. Bad attitude is low altitude. Good attitude is high altitude. Whatever you do, make sure that you stay in your place and do the right thing. Because if you don't, it will show up. It's going to be a mess. Because the system is allowed. There's a line around you. But the Bible says in, in Psalms 103 and verse number 6, the Lord executes righteousness. The Lord make righteousness take place. God will sow the score. Vigilance is mine, said the Lord. Injustice for all who are oppressed. God sets it up. Verse number seven. He made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. Look at what it says. The psalmist, David is a writer. The psalmist says very clearly, first of all, he made known his ways to Moses. He made known his ways. God blessed his servant Moses, and he did it in a special way, so much so until he revealed the law. The first five books of the Bible are said to be written by Moses. God spoke to him. God went, dealt with him. And so Moses got a chance to know God's ways. If you want to know a person, you get to know that person's ways, their mannerisms how they would react under pressure, how they would deal with life. When life offers them a bad deal, how do you deal with it? The statement is, you gotta deal with the hand that's dealt you. You can't sing, oh, Paul Ward's mean, you gotta deal with it. You gotta just deal with it. 
You got to just confront it. You got to deal with whatever hands is dealt you. You can't blame Big Mama Nim. You can't blame your parents. You can't blame your color. You can't blame your education or lack thereof. You got to deal with whatever, whatever neighborhood God allows you to be dropped off in. Guess what? Deal with it. Too many grown men walk around saying, I don't have a dad in my life. God says, I will be your father and your mother. You got to deal with it. You, you have 40 years to deal with it. Let's deal with it. Too many men are walking around like the man in Mark chapter 5 in the graveyard. But the good thing about it, the man in Mark chapter 5, when he saw Jesus, he knew that he needed to worship him. There are some things that we just got to deal with. So we have to learn God's ways. How does God handle these situations? How does God remember us? When you bag up to verse number one, everywhere you go, when you pass each verse, you see that God has loving kindness. God forgives us my iniquity. God heals us. We got to get to learn God's ways. Let me tell you, when you've been through something, you learn God's ways. <laughs> When, you, when you've been through, if you've always had it made, you're just going to be spoiled and crying over everything. But when, when, when you've gone through something, you know God's way. Well, God handled it last time I was laid off. God handled it last time when I was without a job. I don't have to jump off a building because I got a pink slip. God is the one who is my keeper. Get to know God's ways. Another thing he says here when he says, Moses knew the ways of God. God made known to Moses his ways. Is that the leader need to know how God handles things. The leader need to know God's ways. The leader. The leader shouldn't panic every time something comes up. Now the leadership. The man of the house ought not panic every time something come up. Let her run around holler, oh, we like the sky is falling. God got it. Oh, we don't be bankrupt. God has it. I say to the people at New Beginning Church regularly, if I don't run, you don't run. And I ain't planning on running. If the leader knows God's ways, the leader knows that God will handle things well. Questions or comments? So Moses know God's ways. And the reason why he knew God's ways is because he spent quality time with God. When you spend quality time with God, you get to know God's heart. You get to know how God reacts. You get to know what God will do. Have you ever had an incident take place and you've said, no, that's not the person I know. When everybody was blaming that person and you were like, wait a minute, some of these pieces don't fit based on the person I know. You, anybody, anybody ever had that? When Enron, when Enron shut down, first thing they did is stuck a microphone in Pastor Bill Lawson's face and he says, that's not the man I know. He didn't say Ken Lay didn't do it. He didn't say he believed Ken Lay didn't do it. He just said, that's not the man I know. And when life <laughs> turns upside down, you got to say, I know God will fix it. Don't panic. Go, just know God's ways. Watch God's movements. Elijah ran after Jezebel got behind him. Elijah ran, sit up on a juniper, juniper tree, and say, God, is me and me alone now. I'm the only one who's bold enough. And he couldn't brag about being bold because he's running from this woman. Running from Jezebel. Gets under the juniper tree and says, Lord, it's me and me alone now. I'm the only one that's for you, Lord. God had to remind him. I have over 7,000 servants who have not bowed to Baal. 
So don't think you all alone. Know what? Know God's ways. Get to know who God is. Get to spend intimate time with God where you can say, God, I'm getting to know your ways. And God, when I get to know your ways, I see over and over again how you handle things, and I know I don't have to fret about it. Get to know God's way. Now, that doesn't mean that you won't cry. That doesn't mean that you won't feel bad. That doesn't mean that people ain't going to hurt your feelings. That just means that, God, I know your ways, and I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust God. And then you may even get to a point where you can say, God, I'm going to trust you even though I don't know what you're going to do. But I trust your ways. The Bible says Moses knew God's ways. Moses knew the ways of God. And then it says the people of Israel knew his acts. <laughs> King James said he knew his mighty acts. What that says is the people are concerned about drinking water, about eating food, about whether we're going to be attacked by Pharaoh's army. But Mo here Moses is an 80 year old man standing up with a stick in his hand, talking about go forward. Red Sea in front of him, Pharaoh's army behind them, wilderness and desert beside them, on both sides of them. They have absolutely nowhere to go. Now they cry, we had somewhere to bury our dead back in Israel, back in Egypt. We had a place to bury our dead in Egypt. Now you got out here, got us out here. We can't drink all that water. Pharaoh is attacking us from the back. There's desert on the east side. And now here's an 80 year old man with a stick in his hand saying, we going forward. The people said, go back. Moses says, stand still. God says, go forward. Because Moses knew God's ways, he was able to go forward. Now check this out. The people saw a highway being built in the middle of the Red Sea. That's what it says. It says that the people knew God's act. They could brag about it after they got to the other side. They can talk about it once they got to the other side. They could talk about how good God is and how, I mean, Miriam got on the tamarind and made a song of it. When David killed Goliath, boy, the women got David in trouble. Because David had killed the Goliath, the women made a song. They said, David killed, uh, Saul killed a thousand, but David has killed 10,000. Then Saul start, started throwing spears at David. It's good to rejoice after the victory, but it's better to rejoice during the fight, during the tragedy. Just rejoice. Just get involved in praising him. Know God's ways. And you can rejoice in his acts. Know his ways. Know God's ways. And you can rejoice in his acts. God, I don't know what you're doing, but I know one thing. You've shown me before that you are God. And you are God alone. Verse number eight. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Slow to anger and abounding in mercy. The Lord is merciful. What does merciful mean? What, what is merciful? Merciful. The Lord is merciful. The Lord is merciful. Does, does it mean anything to you that God is merciful? What does it mean? The Lord is merciful. He doesn't give us what we deserve. Is that a good thing or bad thing? Well, I think I deserve a new whole cake. And I don't get it. Is that, that good for me? Explain more. God is merciful. We don't always do right. God could take us out. Right? We don't always do right. God could take us out, but God chooses not to take us out. He could wipe us. God could not doesn't even have to blink. God doesn't even have to have to have to think. And we could be ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Because he's God. So because he's so merciful, he's compassionate with us. He blesses us. And he keeps right on blessing. Not because we are so holy. Not because we've done things right. He just keeps blessing us because he has mercy. 
The God we serve is a merciful God. Matter of fact, he's the merciful God. He is merciful. Then he says he's gracious. Another word for kindness and mercy, but this, this word gracious means that he hears the cries of the oppressed. God hear our cries. God hear, you need to be crying out to God other than crying out to people. Because people will let you down. People will mess over you. And people will tell you business. Isn't that something? Your best friend has a best friend. And sometimes that best friend is not you. You may be his or her best friend, but that doesn't mean that he or she is your best friend. Yes? So it says that God is merciful and God is gracious. God hears our cries and he deals with our cries. And he's so merciful until he is so just to do what he does on our behalf. He is gracious. God is slow to anger and abounding in mercy. The psalmist says God is slow to anger. God should have wiped us out. The last lie we told, God could have just cut us down. The last deception we had, God could have taken us out. See, we have come to the conclusion that this, this list of sin are the sins that would get us wiped out. But don't you know just your evil thoughts can get you wiped out? One day that they were they were carrying the carrying the Ark of the Covenant, and and I think it's Uzzah. He was standing there in the Ark. The 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 Ark was about to fall off off the wagon, and and he put his hand up there and pushed it back on. He saved the day. We would think he died. We talking about a merciful God. And when we read. So tell me how, why God, why God, why did God kill this man? Did he kill him for a good reason? God said, don't touch the ark. He touched the ark. Did God have to kill him because he touched the ark? He didn't have to. God didn't have to kill him? Why God kill this man? We talking about a God who's merciful. We're talking about a God who's gracious. We're talking about a God that's slow to anger. We're talking about a God who is abounding in mercy. He's sovereign. He's sovereign. What does that word mean? He will have mercy on whom he will have mercy. Yeah. So now God is a God is a God who is is discriminating. Well, if I got two pieces of candy, I give you one, I keep one, and Brother Whitlock wants the one I got, and I don't give it to him. Did I just discriminate? You may have. So, but if it's my candy, I can do what I want to do with my candy. How he wants. He doesn't have to answer to anybody. You might have to answer to Brother Whitlock. Somebody over here would talk. Come on. He's he not making good sense to me. Come on, you tell me what, what you saying. Why God killed the man? Somebody tell me why God killed the man. Who's talking? God knows. We don't know. We can't assume what he did or didn't do, why he did it. He just didn't want to do it. 
what you you just said. If it's my candy, I don't have to give that's brother. You, that's you. You're you. But it's still my candy. That's you. That's you. So did I discriminate? I, I like guys with gray hair, so I gave it to him. But deep in my heart, right? Maybe it was an example. It was an example. I know that. God is serious about obedience, isn't he? God is so serious about obedience, he sets an example with a man's life. Whenever, whenever people do crazy stuff in school, like these teachers doing in school with these children now, I mean, sooner or later, they're going to set a real good example. Sooner or later, they're gonna, it's going to become an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. God knows how to set an example. And still, we, we are 2,000 plus years away, and we're talking about he's gracious. He's merciful. And then David has the, has the audacity to say, he's slow to anger and he's abounding in mercy, meaning that he has mercy on top of mercy. Give me some, some examples of the mercy that God has on us today. What mercy does God have? Does God have on us today? Does he have mercy on us? He does not do us like he did. And take us out. Okay. Do we touch stuff that God said doesn't touch? Don't touch? How often do we touch stuff God says don't touch? How many times? Well, y'all sure are confessing tonight. Not only that, we think things that God tells us. We think things that God say don't take, don't think. I believe somebody thinking something right now that God said don't think. Yes? Raise your hand if you are. He is rich in mercy is what he's saying. He's abounding in mercy. Verse number nine, he will not always strive with us. King James used this word, this word chide. He will not always strive with us. God ain't always put up with us. Are you with me? God is not, he go, one of these days, God going to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And when God gets sick and tired of being sick and tired, the whole world going to know he's sick and tired of being sick and tired. God is not always going to strive with us. God is not always going to put up with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. Check this out. In one, one spot, I'm saying to you that God is a merciful God. Then I say to you that God is a God who's going to get tired of us. And then I come right back and, and say to you that he won't be angry forever. This God that we serve, he is a sovereign God. And the word sovereign means he does what he wants to do when he wants to do to whom he wants to do. Any way he wants to do it. Have you seen all these people who are health nuts in good shape and they just drop dead? Don't you know God could stop that? These people have paid their dues. They didn't, they didn't smoke. They're in good condition. They eat right. Some of them don't, don't even eat meat. And all of a sudden they have a heart attack and they're out of here. This God that we serve, we have to get to know his ways. And the acts will come. The mighty acts will come. We have to get to know his ways. Nor will his anger be kept forever. He won't keep his anger forever. He won't keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. What does that mean? He has not dealt with us according to our sins. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. Mercy. So here's some more mercy. He already got mercy on top of mercy, mercy abounding on top of mercy. And then he gives us mercy and he gives us grace. 
And we have the audacity to shake our fists at God and say, God, you ain't doing what you're supposed to do. Did you do that today, Lulu? No? <laughs> we point our finger and stump our nose at God and say, God, you should have done it for me. Anybody? But, but the God we serve, he doesn't deal with us according to the sins that we've committed. Now, this word sin, unlike iniquity, is any time you miss the mark. Sin means to miss the mark, to fall short, to not deliver. We miss the mark. We didn't come through for God. And we, therefore, we didn't come through for ourselves. We missed the mark. But he has not dealt with us according to the way we ought to be dealt with. The God we serve, he doesn't even do like mom and dad. I'm going to get you for old and new. Anybody ever heard that? And you don't even have to worry about the definition. The moment you hear it, I'm going to get you for old and new. You already know what's up. Then you start talking about the old, thinking about the old and hope they don't remember all the old. You start thinking about when you took that chunny berry and threw it and hit your sister in the eye. You start thinking about when you, you climbed that tree and fell out the tree and they told you not to climb the tree. Those under 50 wonder what a chunny berry is. <laughs> <laughs> what you have to understand is God does not keep record. Matter of fact, the next few verses will explain that God does something to us and for us that gets rid of our sins from now on. Verse 10, nor does he punish us according to our iniquities. Now he does not cut us off and he does not deal with us according to our sins that we know we're doing or the sins that we didn't know we're doing. He doesn't deal with us according to our sins. But check this out, nor does he punish us for our iniquities, meaning when we caught up in sin, sin on steroids, repeated sin, living in sin, focus on sin, enjoying sin. And church folk are so guilty, we just do stuff. We do stuff and we, we, we do stuff and we act like other folk don't see it and we don't hurt other folk. And we got to lie for it or we have an excuse for it. And don't you know, if you have an excuse for it, God still knows the truth. Because any excuse to do, any excuse. But God does not punish us according to our iniquities. Verse number 11. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. God's mercy is as great as the heavens are high above the earth. Some scientific mind in here can tell us how far the first atmospheric level is from earth. God forgives us and he loves us and he gives mercy to us higher than the atmosphere is. All the way up to heaven. And when we scheming, church folk like to scheme, church folk Church folk can do some scheming, boy. They, church folk can, can do things to benefit them and they act like nobody else sees it. And when they scheme and act like nobody else sees it, God is looking at them and saying, mm, well, well, well. And even with that, God says to us, as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. God gives us mercy. He gives us 
verse, verse number 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Transgression is another word for trespass. It's another form of sin. We trespass. Get on the devil's level. Do things on the devil's turn. And you know, folk, and folk act like, God, you can't even see me. And they make wrong look like right. And they convince other folk that they are doing what's right. And they have an excuse for it. They're trespassing. They're faking it. They're sinning. The good news is God doesn't punish us according to our iniquities. iniquities. As far as the heavens are high above the earth, God's mercy is just that far. And it goes just that far for those and toward those who fear him. It goes just that far. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. God takes our sins, throws them in the midst of a sea forever. God does. God forgive us of our sins. He shuts the door on them. All we have to do is confess them. All he have to do is confess. All we have to do is confess them and he removes them to never rise up against us again because he's a merciful God. He did it with Jesus. He allowed his son to die on Calvary just for us. He rose from the dead just for us. And he gives us a spot in heaven through Jesus Christ for us. And if you've not received Jesus as your savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity to get to know him. The door of the church is open. Invitation is extended. Come to Jesus. If you want to go to heaven, if you want to know God, confess Christ as your Savior. And you can do that through this little simple prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you honestly pray this prayer, believing that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for your sins and rose from the dead, we believe now that you are born again. We welcome you to the family of faith. Please inbox us and let us know if you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. We want to rejoice with you. And if you need a church home, we invite you to the New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. We want to look lift up Ryan Rucker as we we come to our prayer time and Morris Lewis. We'll lift them before the Lord. 
please, please note for the rest of this year, we will be doing Bible study through streaming. We will, we will not meet in person for the rest of this year. We will pick up with our prayer time, our month of prayer every Wednesday night. Um, every Wednesday night in January, we'll have our prayer time. So for the next three Wednesdays, I think it's three left, for the next three Wednesdays, we will be uh, coming to you by Facebook Live and Zoom to, to do our, our Bible study our Bible study, or no in-person Bible study. Let me take this time to thank those of you who, who went out to, to uh, Holy Trinity Church with us and fellowship with us. Thank you so much for going. We appreciate your presence and the Holy Trinity Church and Pastor Rose really appreciate your being there. Thank you so much. Are there any praise reports or prayer requests, praise reports, or prayer request. Are there any praise report or prayer requests? Good evening, everyone. I am so glad to be able to be back in church. Um, I have to say it online that I'm getting better. The pain that I had uh, is subsided. Amen. It's still, it's, I'm still in about 25 more uh, dirt. Amen. It go and come, but I thank the Lord that He kept me. Amen. He made me better, and I'm back to you. Amen. Praise report. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Darrington, for <clears throat> for praise report. We we continue to see God's hand upon the lives of those in our church. We want to pray for Ryan Rucker, and we want to pray for Morris Lewis. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We honor you. We praise you. We lift you we magnify you god we thank you father god for another privilege we thank you for being the god of abounding mercies thank you for giving us a chance now we lift up ron rucker we lift up morris lewis we pray father god that you continue to bless them heal them and strengthen them give them direction give them a good state of mind bless their lives Lord, we ask you to bless them with a praise report. Bless them, Father God, with a hallelujah praise of what good things you've done. Lord, we ask you to amaze the doctor, the psychiatrist. We pray that you amaze those who are intelligent. Lord, blow their mind with great miracles. Bless life, that life will continue to roll on, that people will stand and give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Please remember our um, our vision meeting on Sunday. If you have not signed up, see Sister Davis to sign up for the vision meeting. We're going to feed you um, when, we, when you come to the vision meeting so you don't have to go back home. Please, ma'am, please, sir, attend the vision meeting for this year as we close out this year and as we open up the next year. Again, thank you for joining us here at the New Beginning Church. We're located at 4251 Shuramar Road, Houston, Texas, 4251 Shuramar. Shuramar is spelled S-C-H-U-R-M-I-E-R, S-C-H-U-R-M-I-E-R, Shuramar Road, Houston, Texas, 77048, 77048. USA. Thank you so much for joining us. Please join us on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for our Sunday school. Please join us at 1030 a.m. on Sunday morning for our worship service. And thank you. And please join us again at 715 p.m. for our Bible study on Wednesday night. If you want to give, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting dot jesus at yahoo.com lifting dot jesus at yahoo.com or you can give by way of p.o box our p.o box is 503 missouri city texas 77459 that's p.o box 503 missouri city texas 77459 Father God, we thank you for this privilege of giving. We ask you to bless every giver and bless every gift. 
in Jesus' name. Let us stand to be dismissed. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Lord, for abounding mercies that you did not give us what we deserve and that you keep blessing us in the midst of all that we've gone through. Lord, we ask you to bless us now. Keep us in your will and your way. We ask you, Father God, to continue to walk with us and bless our lives. Lord, we thank you for our church. We ask you to bless our church. Bless our church numerically with more people with more servants. We pray that you bless us, Father God, financially with more money. We pray, Father God, that you bless us, Father God, spiritually with spiritual growth. Bless us to understand your ways and bless us to see your mighty acts. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise God, unto him be power, glory, and dominion. And the church said, amen. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me, John 12 and 32. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.